Are you okay? <laughs> now there's a speech with some facts and figures that I, I wrote out and unfortunately the person who was going to say it hasn't quite got here because they're lost <coughs> with the band with the gear. So I'm going to do my best to remember but it starts off with the fact that 7% of the world's population create 50% of the emissions while the poorest 50% create just 7%. Not only that, but in terms of historical emissions and the carbon dioxide, the carbon in the atmosphere that's up there now, something like 30% of that carbon in the atmosphere was put there by the USA. By comparison, Africa, where the UN climate talks are taking place today, has put up into the atmosphere just one and three quarters percent of the greenhouse gases that are up there now. And it's the gases up there now that are causing the problem. It's not the rate we emit them, it's cumulative. It's how much is up there. 30% was put up there by the US. But I'm not just blaming the US because in terms of historical emissions, the amount of carbon we put up there per head, per capita, the UK is actually out ahead, ahead of the US. That's because we started the Industrial Revolution, but that's you know, nobody intended it to happen, but we have got rich, basically, off the back of that, compared to the people in, in Africa, in Bangladesh, um, who are suffering from that. And we're feeling the effects of that carbon in the atmosphere even, even now, as weather-related disasters have something like doubles the number of them in the, in the last few years. Ex weather extremes are becoming more e frequent and weather related disasters are becoming more frequent and more severe. And in those disasters, weather related disasters, 99% of the deaths caused are in developing countries. That's why we're demanding today climate justice. Last year something, I think 200, 2,000 people, pardon me, died in the floods in Pakistan. They were exceptional floods due to exceptional once in decades downpours. And the floods came back this year and they killed another 300 people, something like that. In the famine in Somalia this year, 30, just under 30,000 children were, supposed, were said to have died already by August. In all these disasters, oh yeah, and last year, the heat wave in Russia is estimated to have killed 56,000 people in Russia. There were forest fires, but also, as well as killing people in Russia, it destroyed a lot of the grain harvest. They put an embargo on grain, and that forced up food prices so that they were rioting over food prices in places like Mozambique. So even though the disaster happened in Russia, the impact was transmitted thousands of miles to the poorest people in the planet. And that's a little example of what's going to happen in a really big way as we move forward through this century. The impact of climate change on food prices hangs like a massive Damocles sword over the world's poor. Now, many of the impacts, many of the disasters that we are beginning to see 
that are happening and the conflicts associated with them, like the Darfur conflict associated with the drying of the Sahel region, they have a variety of factors that are causing them. A whole load of different factors. But one of those is climate change, and climate change is increasing as one of those factors, and it's going to create increase exponentially until finally that's the overwhelming factor. That's what's going to happen. And if you're looking way into the future, well, Kevin Anderson from the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research says that the way we're going now, we're going to hit 4 degrees centigrade by the end of the century. We may hit it halfway through and we may hit 6 degrees by the end of the century, but that's certainly what we're heading for. If we hit that, he says, he cannot see how there will not be mass death and we'd be lucky if half a billion people survive to the end of the century. The population is supposed to hit 9 million by 2050. Out of that, half a billion would survive. That's the reality that we're looking at. That's why we're here today, because you can be sure that that half a billion are the richest people in the world, and the other eight and a half billion will be the poorer people, just like the seven to fifty. So that's why. What we want is... Thank you.